بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to another session of Al-Adab Al-Mufrad Now we're on the chapter 247 And today we're going to discuss about the love Essentially the chapters here will be focusing on after this first one On the love between brothers the love between Muslim brothers. And that's what it said. I asked Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, what did the Prophet do when he was with his family? She said he would do household tasks for his family and when it was time for the prayer, he would go out. So the Prophet is the best of people to his household. So he would humbly help in the house chores. The pious predecessors, the Salaf, may Allah shower blessings on them, crave to learn about and follow the Prophet in all aspects of his life, including how he related with his family, which are from the aspects of his life they may not know unless they asked the people of his household. Urwa ibn Zubair said, I asked Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, what did the Prophet wasallam do in his house? She said, he mended his sandals and worked as any man works in his house. Urwa ibn Zubair also said, I asked Aisha, what did the Prophet do in his house? She said, he did what any one of you would do in his house. He mended his sandals and patched his clothing and he even stitched. So what any one of you do in this house demonstrates that the generation of the companions and those after them were generally humble one, where the leaders of the household helped in the house chores. They were not arrogant nor prideful. More so, it was known to them that their beloved leader and Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also helped in the chores. Amr said, Aisha may Allah be with her, was asked, what did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do in his house? She said, he was a man like other men. He removed the fleas from his garment and milked his sheep. <coughs> Excuse me. So subhanAllah, that shows us that the Prophet ﷺ, the greatest of men, the greatest of mankind, would help his wife, his family in some of the household chores. You hear he would mend his sandals. He would help out in some of those chores. So this whole over-the-top red pill alpha male extra exaggerating alpha male where this is frowned upon and I'm an alpha male, how will I do that? Are you saying the Prophet you're more than an alpha male than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are you saying that your version of being a true man is better than that of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I dare you even try to imagine that, let alone say it. Chapter 248. When a man loves his brother, he should tell him. Habib ibn Ubaid rated from Al-Miqdam ibn Ma'di Karib, who he had met, that he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when one of you loves his brother, he should tell him of that. So we see here from this hadith, the benefits of telling him of his love for him is that when he knows that he loves and is fond of him, he would readily take his consoles and will not reject his words regarding a fault of his that he tells him about, which he may ordinarily reject and consider as from jealousy or unnecessary rivalry. As for the one who informs his brother of his love for him, his first gain is obeying the order of the Prophet wasallam, that the one who loves his brother should tell him of it. Secondly, he benefits from the supplication of other of him from for him that Allah should love him as shown in the next hadith. Mujahid said, one of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, said, he met me and he took hold of my shoulder from behind. He said, I love you. I said, me Allah. For whose sake you love me, love you. He said, if it had not been that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, when a man loves another man, he should tell him of that, I would not have told you. The Muj then Mujahid said, later he spoke of a marriage offer and said, we have a slave girl, but she is one-eyed. So this demonstrates the sincerity of the early Muslims owing to his love for him. He offered to marry a young girl to him. The word awra, one-eyed could also mean a female without a brother or sister from their own father and mother. This may be the meaning referred to in this narration Allah knows best. And as the Prophet Sallallahu said, when two men love each other, the better of them is the one who has the strongest love for his companions. And again, 
This reminds you again of the kind of red pill, over the top, exaggerated masculinity that people are trying to aspire to, where we mentioned earlier, the plus size seller would help out in household chores, would help his wives. Here we have the Prophet is saying that when you have a brother you love for the sake of Allah, that you verbally tell him that you love him. Again, we see people who would frown upon that. Again, we ask, who is the most masculine in the real form of masculinity, the true and correct way of being a true man? You and your concepts or the Prophet wasallam. Again, I think we know the answer. Chapter 249. When someone loves a man, he should not quarrel with him, nor ask about him. Mu'adhi Mujawal said, when you love your brother Muslim, neither quarrel with him, nor treat him badly, nor ask questions about him. It may be that you meet an enemy of his who will say something untrue about him, and thereby cause a split between you. So this hadith shows us that asking around of someone we already love who has faults and every human has his own faults that are unknown to us may destroy the love between us. We should uh, ignore or we should do our best uh, whatever may sow discord between us and our loved ones and we should spend time and energy on matters that will strengthen our relationship upon goodness. Abdullah bin Amr said, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever loves his brother for the sake of Allah and says, I love you for Allah, they will both enter the garden. The one who loves for Allah has a high degree because of his love over the one whom is loved. And this has a weak chain, but the commentary goes on to mention, this hadith is greatly weak by Imam al-Albani, as mentioned above. He said, it has in his chain Abdul Rahman, and he is Ibn Ziyad, Ibn An'um, al-Afriqi, a weak reporter. However, in the foreword of his checking and editing of Shah Sunan ibn Majah, Imam Alauddin al Mughlaythi, Rahimullah, Sheikh Ahmed ibn Abi al Aynain, Hafidahullah, referred to the extensive discussion on the state of this reporter, Abdul Rahman al Afriqi, by Imam al Maqdari. He cited the comments of eminent scholars such as Ahmed ibn Salah al Masri, al Bukhari, Abu Bakr ibn Abu Jawood, Abdullah ibn Muhammad al Maliki, and Imam al Sahanur, Rahimullah, which extolled the virtues of al Afriqi declaring his being a trustworthy reporter and defending some of the issues raised by those who grade him weak among the scholars. Most of these comments by these scholars, according Sheikh Ibn Abi al Aynain, are only found in the works of al who concluded that the most correct opinion is that Abdul Rahman al-Afriqi is a rival reporter. In that case, the hadith on al Ibn al-Samalik above will not be lesser than Hassan sound and Allah knows best. And to end this chapter, it mentions that, that intelligence is in the heart. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, in a safin, that intelligence is located in the heart. Mercy is located in the liver. Compassion is located in the spleen. The endurance or breathing is located in the lungs. So this means here, the commentary mentions, the trials and tribulations that befell the Muslims at Safi in the battle, where over 50,000 Muslims lost their lives is well known. Perhaps Ali radiallahu in the address implied by his saying that intelligence is in the heart, that since the heart is the morsel of flesh in the body, which when sound, the rest of the body is upright, and when it is bad, the rest of the body goes bad. Likewise, so when the heart is sound, the intellect and its complementations or what it contemplates will be sound. Likewise, the character and thereof thereupon mercy and compassion will have their right places if conversely the heart is sick the intellect and its contemplations will be sick and character will be bad leading to further shedding of blood among people and that reminds me of the hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just to recap or to end where the prophet sallallahu said ala inna fil jasadi mudgha idha salahat salah al jasad kulluhu wa idha fasadat fasad al jasad kulluhu Indeed, in the body of every man is a morsel of flesh. If it is sound, the whole body becomes sound. And if it is corrupt, the whole body becomes corrupt. And then he said, indeed, it is the heart. And that's why it's important to, yes, we know that faith is in the heart, but it's also manifest in actions. If someone said, I am a true believer in the heart, I have strong faith. I am a very good Muslim in my heart. But he was stealing and robbing and, and beating and committing all kinds of sins. 
Would we really look at him in reality that he truly is a good Muslim? No. So the element of having the true belief in the heart will reflect on the actions and the words and how on the limbs of the person as mentioned in this hadith. And until next time, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.